plans for marriage with this particular person. It's simply uh, an arrangement of convenience. Well, of course, it has a huge impact on fertility because people are delaying their first child. They're delaying marriage, and then they're delaying their first child. People need reasons to have children. Uh, they've known today, and they've known for a long time, how to avoid having children. Um, if there's no economic incentive to having children, um, people won't unless something other than economic incentive gives them a reason. I don't think that the economic changes would have uh, had much impact and the absence of the value changes. So I think it's, uh, it's basically a matter of um, changes in attitudes, values, beliefs, um, characteristics of uh, the individual. The stock market from the beginning of 1990 to its bottom in 2003 went down 80%. Now, these are blue chip stocks, the Nikkei. It's like the S&P 500 or the Dow here. We were some of the only people in the world to see this because we were looking at demographics. Everybody else was saying, oh, Japan's government doing this, and then their companies are this productive, and they have these management methods, and their people save more, and they work harder. Those were all symptoms. Demographics said, boom, and then bust, and yes. Everything unraveled. Real estate, stocks, everything. Well, another act reaction a lot of people have when they first hear of these trends is to think that the young are going to benefit enormously because there will be fewer of them. They'll, they'll, therefore, it will be easier for them to find a job and to get a good wage. What I call the aging trap uh, is the fact that the pyramid is in, inverted, and so you have a significant amount of older people over the young, pe young people, and therefore you cannot support the elderly. If you look at countries like Italy or Spain, where they're in the advanced throes of population aging, there's a theoretical demand for youth, but in the real world, uh, the youth unemployment rates in double digits. The aging trap is very serious for many reasons. One is because financially countries, and we see it today in Europe, in Asia, um, cannot be supported. Uh, the social services, especially in social market economies, this is uh, especially acute. The result is uh, the economy doesn't produce jobs. We are accustomed to financing retirement and health benefits for, for the elderly by taxes on the working population. Right now, the baby boom generation, the vast number of people born from 1946 through 1964, are in the workforce. They're paying into the system, helping fund the benefits that are being provided to the people who are already retired. But over the upcoming years, we're going to see that set of people move into the retirement phase. If these taxes go up because we have fewer people and we have to tax them each more, that's going to be a, a burden on the younger population, and they will adjust to that burden in a number of ways, partly maybe by investing less in their human capital, partly by maybe working less, and that will have further negative consequences. Social Security is only one part of the problem that we confront on the fiscal front. Medicare and Medicaid are a much bigger problem. Their growth is absolutely staggering under current law. Can we rethink our, our approach to retirement benefits, medical care of the elderly, and uh, adjust it to the world we will be in, which will be a world of stationary or declining population?
The current generations, particularly those who are now retired and those who are approaching retirement, are not fulfilling their proper responsibilities towards future generations. Japan was a great leading indicator for developed countries and Western countries because they were the first to age because they didn't have the baby boom after World War II. When the United States, North America, Canada included, lesser degree Australia, New Zealand, and, and, and most of Europe, slow, now you're talking 60-70% of the world economy. Even though emerging countries are growing rapidly, we're still the majority of these Western countries. When we all slow, that is going to have a bigger impact on the world economy and it's going to hit emerging countries at first as well because emerging countries, t and China's totally typical, 35-36% of its economy is exports. We think when the United States and Europe go into this uh, slowdown, particularly by 2010, due to demographics, that at first it's going to hit emerging countries and their stock markets are going to go down and their economy is going to slow. Now the difference is they will have the demographics to bounce back once they recover from that, whereas the United States and Europe will continue to slow, and countries like Europe and Russia slow almost forever. Ну, естественно, что если все будет продолжаться так, как продолжается, семья умрет, и воспроизводство населения остановится со всеми прелестями, которые с этим связаны. Будет не будет браков, не будет детей. И ничего не будет. Вот. Но оптимисты говорят, ну и хорошо, вот будем на, на фабриках производить детей без э, участия мужчин и женщин, как говорится. Россия, для меня, это большая проблема, которая должна произойти. Because they've been a major military uh, power in the past, they still have a lot of access to that potential power, all that, that, that power has declined, but now they're going to go into an economic crisis. Russia's government is going to be dealing with a collapsing economy, uh, much greater falling taxes. На самом деле причины всего этого, они более глубокие, я пытался об этом немного сказать. И задача гораздо более тяжелая, чем вот, как это воспринимают некоторые, даже многие, и как это воспринимает, к сожалению, наше правительство. One of the big changes in our culture, which is both a reflection and a cause of a lot of these things we've been talking about, is the fact that uh, in times past, people were far more concerned about and focused on children. A hundred years ago or more, uh, 75 or 80 percent of all households had children. There they were, in the next room, growing up and you thought about what was best for them. You organized your life around what was best for them. You allowed cultural messages in the home that was suitable for them. Today, we are down to around a third of households with children, two thirds of households without children, and many of those you know, permanently without children I just think that has been a major force in shifting the focus of people's lives. Where I think uh, the bad news is about children is in the stability of their lives. One of the things that developmental psychologists tell us is that children thrive in stable and predictable relationships. The child thrives on the relationship between the parent. Not necessarily on the relationship to father and mother, which are both good individually for the child, but what really causes the child to really thrive is when father and mother are really together. Most kids who grew up in a single mother household, I was raised by a single mother myself, most kids who were raised by a single mother or raised in a step family, for instance, you know, turn out okay. That's, that's in fact true. At the same time, though, and we have to be, I think, very honestly acknowledging this, 
kids who are raised outside of an intact married household are much more likely to experience problems.